together. Philippians 4 and 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. Come on, tell somebody, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, I'm going to say it again. Again I say, Rejoice. Come on. Put your hands.
for my victorious viewers on this morning. Amen. Oh, and I heard my belly trembled. My lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble when he cometh unto the people. He will invade them with his troops. Verse 17. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat, and the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stall. 18. Yet, Lord, how mercy. I'm getting happy right here. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my, come on, say that with me, salvation. Verse 19 and our final verse, the Lord God is my strength and he will, he will, he will, I can't get past that, he will make me to walk upon my high places and to the chief singer on my string instruments. And before you take a seat, uh, I just want you to preach with me and pray with me on this particular thought on this morning. Don't forfeit your faith. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Type that in the chat if you're in virtual land with us. Say, don't forfeit your faith. You may be seated in the name of the Lord Jesus. The LDL Leadership Development Company said in a 2020 article that a winner makes mistakes and not afraid to say I was wrong. But a loser says it wasn't my fault. Y'all praying with me? A winner works harder than a loser and has more time. A loser always is too busy. Too busy staying a failure. A winner goes through a problem. A loser goes around the problem. A winner respects those who are superior to him and tries to learn from them. A loser resents those who are superior to him and tries to find fault. So while the majority of Americans believe that the issues of racism, immigration, and health care reform, and sexual assault, and police corruption are broken, uh -huh. They think it's broken, but I just want to drop by on, on this morning and talk to some believers. If you believers with me, type in in the comments, I'm a believer. If you're in the room, just wave your hand. I'm a believer. Believers know that if we rely on human re wisdom, there is little reassurance that reform will ever match God's wisdom. Believers know better. Come on, come on, type that in. Believers know better. If you want God's wisdom, listen, you can't invoke your wisdom. Uh -huh. God's reformation, according to God, looks like humility. Oh, that's a dirty word. No bragging, no bragging. God's wisdom looks like you're gentle. You treat people with care and respect. Merciful, show compassion. Put it back on the screen. Uh, yes, yeah, there we go. Merciful shows compassion and forgiveness. Uh-huh. Impartiality. No preference for no group over the other one. You can put it back on the sermon topic. Amen. Impartiality. That's what God's wisdom looks like. Amen. So when the goal is to reform and improve. I don't know in the, who am I talking to on this morning. When the goal is to reform or improve race relations. Immigration, health care reform, improve our police department. Don't stop if the puzzle is finished. But the picture is wrong. Oh, 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 I'm talking to somebody. Hey, listen, don't stop. If you really want race reform, if you really want our police departments to be better, if you really want health care and so that it's affordable for all, don't stop. When you get a picture, make sure the picture is right. Look at somebody and say, make sure the picture is right. And so believers, winners, who am I talking to? Pull on the power of God. I'm saying believers, 
You know you can't do it within yourself. Ain't nowhere in the world you can make sure a cop it does his job and don't beat up and don't kill any more black brothers and sisters. Ain't no way in the world we can stop what's in a man's heart. But believers, winners, pull on the power of God. Look at somebody and say, pull on the power of God. I cannot borrow vernacular from the gym, from people who work out in the gym. Listen, we need to know when we need God to spot us. Ooh, every now and then when you go out in the gym and when you got to lift something a little too big for you, police reform is a little too big for you. Listen, immigration reform is a little too big for the human mind. Every now and then you need to say, God, I need you to spot me. Look at somebody and say, God, I need you to spot me. I like, I like. See, the devil wants us to think Jesus is powerless to help us. Oh, I know it. I know it. Some of y'all may say, well, pastor, it's hard to be in faith all the time. Listen, the devil wants you to think that. Yes, 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 yes. But Jesus says, come boldly to him. Oh, Jesus says, come boldly to him. Look at, look at Hebrews 4 and 16. It says, let us, come on, y'all got to preach that with me. I'm excited already. Let us go, therefore, come boldly unto the what? Throne of grace. There's the key word. Underline that if your paper Bible save on this morning. Look at somebody and say, come boldly. I don't know about you. When I walk in the gym and I got too much weight, I ain't afraid to ask somebody, uh, could you spot me? Because it's too much for me. It's too much. It's too much. And so you got to go boldly. In other words, constantly. Without fancy words. Who needs fancy words when you're praying and you need God to help you out? I need God. It's too much going on on my job. Race relations on my floor. Race relations in my job is too much for me. And you need to be persistent. Say persistent. With commitment. And that is always, always go to God. Always go to God. Before you, listen, do me a favor. Before you drive up to where you're supposed to be with your job. Before you drive up to where you need to be. Listen, you ought to be committed to prayer before you get out your car. And if you're that bad, you need to get up in the morning and pray. Say, don't forfeit your faith. Come on, say it again. Don't forfeit your faith. Reformers succeed with a commitment to gain victory in every situation. I'm talking to those that want to win. I want to talk to those that want things to be changed. You succeed with commitment to gain victory in every situation. Here it is by God's power. That's the only way we're going to get it. I appreciate the march, and I appreciate the protesting, and I'm out there, and I'm in the courtroom. I'm doing everything I can do, but I can promise you, before I walk in the courtroom, I say, God, give me the tongue of the learn, so I may know what to do, and I may know what to do to say to help my brown brother or si sister get out of this charge so they can go home with their family, so they can go home and take care of their needs, get on their job. And I thank God and I celebrate that this week just alone God gave me the help. I helped two brother, brown brothers go home to their families on this week. And before I opened up my mouth, before the judge said, counsel, is there anything you need to say? Before I opened up my mouth, I said, God, give me the tongue of the learn. Because these are two men that need to go home with their families. These are marriages that need to be restored. Come on, look at somebody and say, ask God to help you reform the system. And prayer ensures that I will not lose. You tell me, well, you know, I don't pray and I don't commit myself to faith all the time because I, you know, I just don't have much, you know, faith in that all the time. But I dare you to get committed to prayer because prayer ensures that I will not lose. I dare you to type that into the comment in Facebook and YouTube. Prayer ensures that I will not lose. Look at the mind and say, so keep praying. Come on, come on, look at them men. Look at them beautiful men right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a picture taken right here in Detroit. Look at somebody and say, keep praying. All the time. I'm getting happy. I got 25 more minutes. I can take my time, but I got happy. Look at one other person and say, keep praying. 
such as the discipline in our text today to teach us that victories only come by a commitment to prayer. And so in our text, the prophet uh, Habakkuk senses that God's judgment is on the way to Israel. Ooh, it's coming. I don't know about y'all, but listen, those that hear me in the spirit, y'all can hear it. Y'all know judgment is coming. Y'all, I, I can't I can't because we streaming live, but y'all know why judgment is coming. Judgment is coming because we flipping things. Yes, 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 yes. I ain't made my personal opinion, but we saying women can be men and when women can be men and men can be women. I'm just talking about judgment is coming. I know, I know that ain't politically correct, but I'm just letting you know how you can tell the signs of the time. When lovers, men become lovers of themselves and they walking away from wisdom. Look at somebody and say judgment is on the way. So the northern kingdom of Israel had already been taken into captivity. In other words, they had lost their freedom. They was already in jail. Say northern kingdom. They was already in jail under Assyrian rule. But in our text today, where we find our text today, Habakkuk 3, 16 through 19, in our text today, Habakkuk, which his name means to wrestle. Say wrestle. In other words, Habakkuk is wrestling with this impending judgment that is on the way. And so he's watching it. He's saying, Lord, have mercy. Judgment is on the way. Wave at me if you already know judgment is on the way. You can sense it. It's all it's like my grandma down in Warren, Arkansas. She can, she can smell it and know when the rain was coming. How many of y'all been around people like that? They get a little something in their hip and their knees, and they be like, yeah, it's going to storm tomorrow. I can feel it already. That's what Habakkuk is doing in our text. He can sense it. Uh-huh. He sense it. He's watching the southern kingdom because the northern kingdom is already in jail. He's talking to, he's, he's talking about the southern kingdom of Judah falls into more and spiritual failure the babylonian empire the empire the enemy is quickly approaching and habakkuk sees the impending destruction of the nation of israel he says so what what does that mean what does that mean preacher let me give you some examples of what god's judgment before you say so what Mm -hmm. Okay, so what? So what they saying men are women and women are men and it don't matter. We can kill black men and don't have to care nothing about. So what about all of that? Let me just help y'all with what God does when you start doing his people wrong. Let me show you in history. Can y'all ride with me for a minute? I got 22 more minutes. Listen, the New Testament points to the Old Testament. Say New Testament points to the Old Testament. And it says something like this in the days of Noah. What are you talking about? God got so frustrated with how much destruction and evil and wrong was. God wiped out the whole earth. Yeah, my God. And he said, take two of every kind and put it in the boat, in the ship. Yeah. I'm talking about God's judgment. Sodom and Gomorrah, two cities consumed by fire and brimstone for raping. Yeah. For being egotistical and being haughty. Say, Sodom... And Gomorrah. One more. I got to give you one more example of God's judgment. The ten plagues of Egypt. The King Pharaoh, he did not want to let God's people go. So he hit him with plague number one. Boom. Still didn't want to let him go. God hit him with another plague. Boom. Still didn't want to let him go. God had to hit him again. And hit Pharaoh again. And again and again. And finally after the tenth plague, he said, listen, man, I'm tired of these plagues. I'm going to let them go. And so if you don't think God's judgment is real, I need you to wake up. Look at somebody and say, wake up. up. Note in verse 16, you'll see it on the screen. Verse 16, Rebecca says, I hear in my body trembles. Ooh, Lord, and my lips quiver at the sound. The rottenness entering my bone. My legs tremble beneath me. Uh -huh. So instead of surrendering to the truth of God's word, Regarding God's judgment, Habakkuk prays to God. you see it on the screen. Listen, listen. All I'm simply saying is, listen, when you know and you sense it, like my grandma, she knew the rain was coming. 
and my believers that were with me, they are, that are with me in Facebook, you with me in YouTube, you with me under the sound of my voice, when you know God's judgment is on the way. Because you got a, a Noah example. You got the Sodom and Gomorrah example. Listen, you got the ten plagues example. When you know, I just need you to say this with me. Pray. That's what Habakkuk said. Cause he, Habakkuk was a unique prophet. And most times, prophets tell you. Most times, prophets say something. But Habakkuk said, I know it's coming. It's on the way. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get on my knees and pray. Look at somebody and say, when you know danger is coming. When you know God got to get somebody. Just start praying. If you don't mind, give God a praise right there. Thank you, Habakkuk. Thank you, Habakkuk. I don't know about you. You need to tell Habakkuk, thank you. Yes, Lord. That God put it on your heart to pray for people like me that was on my way. Habakkuk didn't forfeit his faith. So what's the conclusion in my last 19 minutes of this text, preacher? What, what I need to get from this so I can move on through this day? Listen, you need to trust God and wait. You need to trust God and wait. I dare you to type that in the comments. I dare you. I dare you to type that in the comments. Trust God and wait. Uh-huh. And during times of uncertainty about when God is going to solve injustice, believers direct their questions by prayers to God. And when you got a question, God, why are we going through this? God, why yet another example of corruption? God, why are we going through this again? Habakkuk is trying to give us a pattern. Say pattern. Habakkuk said, get on your knees and pray. That's what you got to do and not against God. Because some of us say, well, I don't think God can handle this one. This, this is a little too big. But I dare you to do what Habakkuk is calling us to do. Look at somebody and say, pray. Uh-huh. Forfeiting your faith is foolish. I said that. I know you don't like that in YouTube land and Facebook land. You may not like that, but I'm going to say it again. Forfeiting your faith is foolish. I got Bible. I got Bible. Go with me to Psalms 14 and 1. Come on, y'all got to read this with me. The fool, come on, say it with me. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I'm just talking to somebody on this morning. When you, you're going through what you're going through, the last thing you need to say, that it ain't no God. The last thing you need to say is, God, this is too big for you. The last thing you need to say is, I'm going to do this on my own. I'm going to push it a little bit further. The last thing you need to say is, we're going to defund the police department. I'm not going to touch that. I can't touch that. I can't touch that. But my only question is, when problems and troubles and rise and you need an emergency, if you defund the police department, who going to come see about you? If you defund the fire department, who going to come put your fire out? Look at somebody and say, start praying. Don't forfeit your faith. So Rebecca, help us on this morning in my last 16 minutes. Because they ain't feeling me in YouTube land and Facebook land. They ain't feeling me. They ain't feeling me in the house. I don't know if because it's the mask on or what. But they ain't feeling me yet. Come on, Habakkuk, help me out. And listen, so Habakkuk, how do we live in a world without resolution? Whew. Can y'all just at least wave at me? If that's the question on your mind. How do we live in a world without resolution to the problems and the ills of this society? And I'm getting calls all week long because people are being fired now. People are being rolled up now. People are being suspended now like never before. Brown brothers and sisters, that's what I'm talking about. They're being rolled up now. They're being fired now. They're being followed in the stores more now than ever before. <laughs> Habakkuk, help us on this morning. How do we live in this kind of world and hold on to your faith? How do you do it? Uh -huh. Regarding injustice and issues all around us, he said, first thing, first thing I want to drop by a higher dimension center and say to us on this morning, come on, Habakkuk. Habakkuk says, number one, relax. Woo! Look at somebody and say, relax. Uh-huh. Listen, listen. Trust the Lord even in the midst of utter de devastation. Say, trust the Lord even in the midst of utter devastation. 
Uh huh. So look at Habakkuk three seventeen. Uh huh. Trust the Lord. Uh, it says it with me. Come on, y'all, read this with me. I know, I know, I know. Just walk with me. Walk with me through the text. Uh huh. Come on, read this with me. Come on. Although the fig tree, what shall not? Come on, I need y'all to read that with me. Although the fig tree, neither shall the fruit. The labor of the olive oil shall not shall fail. The fields shall yield no meat. Where are you going with this, preacher? Habakkuk teaches us that while injustice is all around us, being worried will not stop the inevitable. Look at the mind and say, stop worrying. Relax. Stay committed to prayer. Oh, I'm going to say that one more time. Stop worrying. Relax. And stay committed to prayer. Can I do that one more time? I got 14 more minutes. Stop worrying. Relax. And stay committed to prayer. In almost a vision Habakkuk was having, Habakkuk saw the Judea countryside devastated, ruined, perhaps by the invasion that was on the way. Uh -huh, by the Babylonian army. In other words, listen, Habakkuk was having a vision in this particular text. Listen, right here in verse 17. And he saw that God's judgment was on the way. Uh huh. But listen, Philippians, I love what it says. That, but we got to do one thing. We got to do one thing before we display that. Before we display that, we got to do one thing. While we are, listen, not worrying. While we relaxing and while we staying committed to prayer, listen, you got to know something about worry. Say, hmm, what you got to know about prayer? Listen, when you worry, listen, you intruding on God's time. When you worry, you are intruding on God's time. I know that went over your head, but I'm going to say that one more time. Don't intrude on God's time with worrying. I got Bible on that. Philippians 4 and 6. It says, be careful for nothing but in. Come on, y'all say that with me. But in everything, everything. By prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving. What? Let your request. God, I got to go to this job on tomorrow. God, I got to move out in the neighborhood tomorrow. I got to go to these stores. I got to get to my job. I got to go to my children and take care of things. Listen, let everything be known with requests and be known to God. Look at somebody that said, he don't know it unless you pray it. I'm going to say that again. He ain't going to know until you start praying. Hallelujah. And so number two, as I move quickly, Habakkuk says, number one, relax. Say, hey, relax. relax. Number two, he says, rejoice. Uh -huh. In the midst of, of this almost complete loss, still rejoice in the Lord. In the midst of almost complete loss, who am I talking to? You about to lose some things. You may, you get ready. Some things are not about to be the same way anymore. And I'm going to push it a little bit further. Some of us going through some marital things, financial things. Things ain't what they need to be and things are not what they should be. But listen, still rejoice. Look at somebody and say, still rejoice. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Habakkuk 3.18 says it this way. Habakkuk, he says, I will rejoice in the Lord. Look at somebody and say, I will rejoice in the Lord. What you saying, Rebecca? He's teaching us that while injustice is all around us, being bitter and pessimistic and sad blocks your sight. Woo! Being bitter and pessimistic, it ain't gonna get better. And 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 and, and sad, it blocks your sight of the Savior. Look at somebody and say, I need to see God in everything I'm going through. I need to see God. So I'm going to have to fix my perspective. Look at somebody and say, fix your perspective. And see God even in the midst of loss. Even in the midst of transition. Even in the midst of what you're going through. Look at somebody and say, see God. Look around for God. Because God is all around. Habakkuk knew that this God of majesty and power is not diminished because man faces difficult trials. If y'all going to be honest with me on this morning in my last 10 minutes, how many of y'all have wondered, God, are you in the midst of this? Come on, y'all leave me out here. 
Come on, tell the truth. You went through something so devastating. It hit you almost like a bomb. And you said, God, are you in the midst of this? And Habakkuk said, listen, fix your perspective. God is right there. Look at somebody and say, God is right there. Habakkuk says, I will praise you and even rejoice in you, even if I'm caused it personal pain on my own. Because if you're going to tell the truth on this morning, as I get ready to get out of here, listen, if you tell the truth on this morning, some of us are going through our own personal pain because of us. Okay, y'all going to leave me like that. Pastor Cranfer in my life has gone through some hard trials and tribulations because of me. My focus was wrong. I was pessimistic and I was blocking the sight of the Savior. And so every now and then, Rebecca says, not only you got to relax, but you got to rejoice. Look at somebody and say rejoice because God is already there. Uh huh. The truth is we often close our ears to God. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh, that's the truth, that's the truth. If he responds in a way we didn't expect. And when God says, I'm not going to fix it. When God says, I'm not going to heal him. When God says, you ain't going to get that job. When God says, I'm taking your bonus plan. When God says, I'm going to mess things up and you're going to be mad and it's being restructured and being turned all over. And sometimes when you didn't want that, sometimes you get mad at God. Who am I talking to on this morning? But 2 Corinthians 12 and 10 helps us out. Come on, Paul. Talk to us. Come on, y'all preach this with me. Come on, Paul says, Did therefore I take pleasure. Oh, Lord, have mercy, Paul. That's a little too heavy on this morning. I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in persecution, in discretion. Here it is. For Christ's sake. Uh huh. Because when I'm weak, therefore, that's when I'm strong. The reason why God had to realign some things, the reason why God had to take some people out your life, the reason why you had to lose that job, the reason why things had to be realigned and restructured, because you thought you was making it. In other words, you thought you was balling. And I got to keep on moving, but I heard a podcast on this week between T.I. And Master P, I know I ain't supposed to be listening to that, but I see I see God in everything. Look at somebody say, look around. God is in everything. And in this podcast, in this podcast, it blessed me. It blessed, how can a podcast between T.I. and Master P, Pastor, how can that bless you? I'm going to tell you. Because T.I., we know he's struggling with God. That's all right. That's all right. Be truthful. How many times in our life have we struggled? But Master P is confident. And so every time Master P tried to tell him why he's living a good life. Why he's a millionaire and a millionaire and a millionaire on top of that. T.I. kept trying to crowd him out. It wasn't intentional. But T.I. is struggling. Say struggling. In other words, Rebecca in our text is wrestling. It's all right to wrestle. But every time Master P tried to say it was God, it was God. I bought it, but it was God. I got it, but it was God that gave me the information. T.I. was crowding him out. But Master P, if you ever hear this sermon on this morning, you bless me. Because a person of that status ain't talking about God today. And what did he say? He said, Preacher, what did he say? And I got to move. I got six minutes. Master P said he bought land in Atlanta off the freeway 10 years ago. Say 10 years ago. 10 years ago, ago, he bought prime land. Whole bunches of it. 10 years ago, prime went at a low cost. 10 years ago. He said year one, nobody wanted to buy it. He wasn't going to do nothing when he just bought it. Say bought it. Buy some land. Year two, nobody bought it. He was like, oh, Lord. Year three, nobody wanted it. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And ten, year ten, a developer looking to do something of a big magnitude. They had to get him out the way. <laughs> I love how Master P said it. Yeah, had to get him out the way. And T.I. was kind of messing with him. He said, how much money did it take to get him out the way? He said, it was some good money, Doc. 
and he was trying to give praise to God. And all I'm trying to say is, you got to understand, you got to give God rejoice and pray. So if you're just not too mean, give God some praise. You can be rich and rejoice. Oh, I like that. Can I say that again? You can be rich and rejoice. Thank you, Master P, for blessing me. Because he helped me to know you can be rich and still give our praise to God. So give God 10 seconds. I know, I know it ain't cool. But if Master P can give God some praise, you can too. Get up on your feet and come on, give God some praise. Come on, come on, come on, give God 10 seconds. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for fixing my perspective, for fixing my sight, so I can see you and everything that I go through. Now sit down. Come on, Rebecca. Whoa. Oh, how mercy. I got happy. Number one, Habakkuk said, come on, Habakkuk, help, help me, help me. He says, listen, how do we live in a world without resolution? How do you live in a world without resolution? Number one, relax. Number two, he says, rejoice. Say, rejoice. Lest I hold you too long in my last four minutes, respond. Woo! Lord have mercy. Here it is. I like what I like. I like it. I like it. What Rebecca said right here. Respond with obedience to whatever God commands. Look at somebody that said respond to obedience to whatever God commands. Come on. Say that one more time. Respond. I know. I know. Y'all trying to soak it in. I know. I know. But I've been living with this text all week and I got happy all in my sanctified soul. I I love this environment because my secretary work on a different day that I work on to stop the spread of coronavirus. I can just praise God. And when I got to this point, I jumped up up my seat and I began to give pride praise because I'm going to respond. Say respond with obedience to whatever God commands. Where is that in the text? Look at Habakkuk 319. Uh -huh, the Lord God is my strength. And this is where you got to start underlining right here. He will make my feet like hind's feet. He will make me to walk upon my hind high places. Lord have mercy. Come on, Habeka. Come on. We got, we got just a few minutes. Habeka teaches us that while injustice is all around us, there's a motive for why God wants me to stay committed to prayer. Look at somebody and say, there's a motive. For why God wants me to stay committed to prayer. Can we say that one more time? There's a motive for why God wants me to stay commo committed to prayer. And when, when you go back to the Frazier protest, can I go back there? And me and Brother Kawan, Deacon, Deacon Weaver, we was outside. And, and Deacon Little, we was outside. And Deacon Durrell, we was outside. And we were in the Frazier protest. Because I think it's right to protest. Because that's a part of taking your rights back. But in the midst of protesting, the Lord pushed me. And he said, son, that's all right. That's good. Uh-huh. Yes, that's good. But he said, go back to the church. Put your signs out and offer prayer. Lord, have mercy. He said, go back to the church. And offer prayer. Uh-huh, during the Frazier protest. God said, put down the camera. Because the truth is, some of us just want a camera moment. Y'all know it's true. Some of our politicians, that's all they want is a camera moment. Their heart still ain't right. Given the right opportunity, they'll draft the legislation. They'll draft a law. They'll whoop your behind. The truth is, this ain't about a camera moment. Your heart got to be right. So God pushed me. He said, that's all right, son, that you took a picture. That's a good thing. But right now, put that camera down and offer prayer. And so we came back, me and Lady Monica and Sister Denise and Deacon Durrell 
and Deacon Weaver and Deacon Little, we came back to the church and we offered prayer. Look at somebody and say, say, have some balance. Ain't nothing wrong with protesting, but you gotta make sure you pray. Ain't nothing wrong with standing up for what's right, but make sure you tell them what it means to be righteous. Yes, Lord. But this gonna bless you. And I promise you, I'm gonna let you go. Well, hallelujah. I done got happy. I'm supposed to find the end to this message. Because my minutes are done. But I love what Rebecca said right here. When he said, he will make my feet like hind feet. What you mean, preacher? Rebecca thought of a deer rolling up the high heels in my neighborhood right around the corner from here we got deer running all the time but i love the picture that Rebecca painted in this text Rebecca said it's just like a deer running up a mountainside notice that the deer never slips and he never falls down i know that missed you thank you Rebecca, for painting that picture but the deer says, but the help record says, when the deer go up the hill, they never lose a step and they never fall. Look at somebody and say, pray. Because when you pray, you never lose a step and you never fall. As I trust God, He will not allow me to slip or to fall into hopelessness, anxiety irritability thinking about death just because I'm at a traffic stop so look at somebody and say I trust God with all your mind with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge you him and he will direct your path listen sir then I'm gonna let you go I'm a precious value commodity. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Say that to somebody. Say, I'm a precious value commodity. Look at one other person and say, I'm a precious value commodity. Lady Monica, she says it all the time. I'm one of God's favorite. She been saying that. Thinking there for 20 years. She'll look at me when our money got low. She'll look at me when I got frustrated. She'll look at me and say, I'm praying because I'm one of God's favorite. And when I pray, God will remember me. I'm precious value commodity in the eyesight of God. I'm salt. Think of somebody say, I'm salt. That means you're a precious commodity because in this text, Salt was a precious commodity. Look at Matthew 5 and 13, and then I got to go. Thank you. Good morning, HDC. It's been good preaching to you. So I'm going to drop this off, and then I'm going to let you go. Come on, Matthew 5, 13. Come on, talk to me. He said, ye are the salt. Come on, say, preach that with me. Look at somebody say, you are the salt of this earth. Look at one other person say, you are the salt salt the precious value commodity in this earth so when you pray when you pray when you pray you can move god when you pray you can move mountains when you pray god said let me listen because i'm precious look at somebody say i'm precious 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 hallelujah so standing up for justice ain't easy. Standing up for justice is not easy. Standing up for justice is not easy. I'm gonna say that one more time. Standing up for justice ain't easy. But look at somebody say, but when difficult times come my way, make faith a part of your daily activity. Make faith part of what you do every day. Make faith part of what you say every day. Speak faith. Hear faith. How do you do that, preacher? Watch HPC videos. If you lose your faith, go back and grab an old sermon and let that sermon preach to you. What else can I do, preacher? Read daily reading and 
reflect to. Thank you, Sister Jessica. Yeah, she pointed that out in Bible class on Wednesday night. Yes, Lord. And if you run out of something to do, grab your Bible and journal. Look at somebody say, make faith a part of your daily living. And you won't slip. You won't fall. You won't be irritable. You won't lose hope. So if you don't mind, give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Give God praise. Yes, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Y'all got a secret place. Whoa. I'm about to give you this mic, Lady Monica. God got a secret place for me. Because somebody say, God got a secret place for me. Psalms 91. And I got to let you go. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Pull up to Psalm 91 and 1. What does that mean? That I got a secret place. I got protection. I got comfort. I got care. I got protection. I got provision. I got comfort. Yes! Yes, Lord! Hallelujah! We must rely on the Holy Spirit to guide me away from danger. Yes, Lord! So He can strengthen us. Come on! Give God praise! Give God praise! 